Hello, and thank you for joining us for another week of Mark's Madness, joined as always by Mark Schein. I'm Matt Finkel, and Mark, seven days ago, everyone's still talking about it. It's yes, a week old are. already, the 2016 Lima Cup. What a finish. Boy, did that game live up to the hype. 54-52, Lima Sr. gets the win on Xavier Simpson's dramatic buzzer-beating shot from the free throw line. X, off balance, yes! Basket is good! X marks the spot! Lima Sr. wins the Lima Cup! Where does this game rank for you? Well, first of all, if you're looking at an offensive explosion, that didn't happen. The defense was too solid. The teams competed so much. They played so hard. There wasn't going to be a, an offensive explosion of some type. Both teams gutted it out. It, it was a great atmosphere for the basketball game to be played in certainly will prepare them for things down the road in the tournament. It's a great experience for everybody involved. There were so many things in that game that are worth dissecting and breaking right. down, but of course the big shot is the deciding moment. Right. And Xavier Simpson, you know the ball is going to be in his hands. They called a timeout with about 15 seconds left. Drew up a play that Xavier said they thought they were going to be in zone. It was Ethan O'Connor locking up X, and then he just makes an offensive play that will go down in, in Lima senior history. Yeah, well, coaches use this phrase, it's more about the Jimmys and Joes than it is the X's and O's. And what happened is you just got a player who makes a great play. It's not a play that was designed, not something that was drawn up, not something that we got screens and guys cutting here and everywhere. It's one offensive player who makes a great play over a defensive player who was in really good position. So the Spartans remain unbeaten, yep. and then this weekend they went on the road to Toledo Central Catholic, got a win on Friday, knocked off St. Francis by 25 at home. So the track title looking like a, more than a possibility. It's, it's likely at this point for the Spartans. Yeah, it really is. Of course, they have seven games remaining on their schedule. Five of them are against teams they've already beaten, and that can be kind of a, somewhat of a challenge, you know, to get yourself mentally and emotionally up to play someone that you've already beaten. Three of those five will be road games, but you're right, Spartans sitting in a really good spot. Lima Senior remains number two in the rankings for Division One. Now for LCC, they did lose their first game, of course, but they remain number one in the rankings. No shame in losing to Correct. an undefeated Division One school. And then Lima Central Catholic beat Elida this weekend easily. They bounce back nicely. Big game tonight, Tuesday, against Van Buren. They have a lot of big games coming up. Van Buren, they have Lincoln View on Friday. The thing I like is how Thomas Williams is coming along for them. You know, we've talked all year long that maybe LCC wasn't have a really good bench this year. They didn't have that second or sixth, seventh, eighth guy they could go to. But Thomas Williams has stepped up in the last four games and given them some good minutes. I think they're really developing something there. Something of note too coming out of the loss just on Twitter and, and from talking to some of the T-Bird players they seem even hungrier now. It's you know this team they they suffered a close loss and I don't know that they're gonna lose again because that has taught them so much about themselves and made them even hungrier to win. I would agree with that and the question came up many times lately can both of these teams play in the state tournament? Well the answer is if the word is can it's yes they can. They both have the talent, they have the experience, they have some coaching that's good in that particular situation can, yes they can, will they? Well, that's a very difficult thing to say because, you know, matchups or foul problems or a bad shooting night, things can happen along the way, but they both can have the ability to get there. So a great night for Lima basketball and a great night for Lima Senior who gets the win. Now for LCC, this is their final home game Tuesday against Van right. Buren. Then they hit the road for the last four. Very difficult schedule. Spencerville, Defiance in there. I mentioned Van Buren and then Lincoln View on Lincoln Friday. View. Yeah. So let's talk about Lincoln View and the NWC because they remain unbeaten. They're now 18-0. They got two wins in Delphus. First, they yeah. beat Jefferson on Friday and then St. John's on Saturday. Yeah, well, the, the game that we saw on Friday night was the league game. I think that was the more important of the two, obviously, because one of their goals is Northwest Conference Championship. And they're down. They're down seven, and they make a nice rally to come back and win the basketball game. Low-scoring game, defensive-oriented. Good basketball game over on the stage. They were down seven, like you just said, in that right. third quarter. Hayden Ludwig really seemed yes, to did. get him going. Why don't you show us how in, in your well, weekly play breakdown? This is your 6'3 your senior stepping up and earning his scholarship right here. First of all, it's playing against zone. So we're going to get the skip pass right here. He steps up into the seam of the zone and buries a three. And you can see they were down seven when that occurred. Um, here we're going to look at the play. Watch him this time. Cross court pass. And his, uh, his teammate steps into the seam of the zone, drawing them, and he buries the jump shot. If you want to go through that whole sequence again, let's take a look at where he's at and how this whole thing plays out. Because he's over here right now on this side of the zone, so this defense has to come and play him. Then, as you can see, he makes the cross-court pass, and two key things occur right here. First of all, he's going to continue to the corner, and second, his teammate takes the ball into the seam of the zone, and that frees him up for the second of his three-point field goals that he buries right here. Of course, the defense also had to be concerned with Adams on the interior because he's had such a good year, too, so it leaves that three ball open, and you can see very important. And the baseline out-of-bounds play, 
This is just simply flex cut out of baseline, out of bounds. And again, if you wonder, well, how did the guy get so open? We can look at this again. If you notice what happens, he's in the corner over here, and the defense is out hugging him. They have to come out and play him because he's made those three-point field goals. His teammate's going to step in. Here comes the screen, and he's going to come clean off the screen on the flex cut right here. And again, that's his uh, eighth point in this particular sequence at a very important time. So Inconview comes from behind, gets the win. You have a prediction for them against LCC? Because the one thing I will say about Lincoln View this season, the fan support and the community support has been so exciting. Yeah. I mean, as it should be, they're undefeated. But this senior class has been playing together for a while. It'll be a sold out arena for be. the LCC game. And it, it, that makes a difference, right? It really does. It'll be a huge home court advantage for them. But you know, this is a Thunderbird team that's very experienced. They're used to playing in environments like that. Most of these guys played in the state tournament as sophomores. So they're not going to get rattled in that particular situation. It's a huge game. It's not a conference game for either school, of course. But it'll be a huge basketball game. I think that the Thunderbirds should be favored going into it. But I think uh, with the uh, senior leadership that they have at Lincoln View, it'll be competitive. It's number one versus number one. Of course, Lincoln View right. number one in D4, LCC number one in D3, as we mentioned before. Now, the league games left for the Lancers, right. it's Ada and Paulding. So they're in good shape here in the Northwest Conference. Absolutely in great shape for them. And, and we're going to have a big league game ourselves with Crestview and, and uh, uh, Spencerville, Spencerville playing this yeah. week. And we're looking forward to that. One of the reasons is, Mark Miller and I get up to do a game with Jerry Snodgrass from the OHS AA. Of course, Jerry used to work with us here at uh, WTLW when we were back doing games in that area. He has graciously decided to come up and spend another weekend with us, and we'll have a chance to obviously highlight the basketball game. That's the foremost thing we want to do, but also to just talk about things that are going on within the OHS AA right now. Yeah, very knowledgeable guy, Jerry. Oh, Always yeah. interesting to talk to him about what's going on right. within the OHS AA. And then Spencerville, you mentioned them. They're 5-1, and 13-2 and two overall. Yep won seven in a row, yep. they'd still have to play Jefferson and Crestview and Marion Local and LCC, as a matter of fact. So their schedule's right. tough, but they still are playing good basketball right now. And if Lincoln View trips up in the league, right. they could get a share. That's correct. And, you know, we've talked about balanced scoring for lately for them. Both Dakota Pritchard and Zach Goki have been averaging about 14 and a half points a game in that seven-game spell that you've been talking about. So they're playing well. Um, obviously, the chances of winning the league have disappeared, or not disappeared, but they could still share, perhaps. Uh, since they lost to uh, Lincoln View early in the season by one point. I'm sure they'd like to have that game scheduled about right now, but yeah. of course the schedule didn't play out to that particular manner, but playing well over at Spencerville right now. And just a little bit of housekeeping here, going back to Del Jefferson for a second. Trey Smith scored 39 points this weekend, and we were saying that he became the all-time leading scorer in Van Wert County, passing Corey Sinning, a Van Wert grad, now 1,893 career points. Thanks to some Facebook friends of ours, yep. we are alerted to Gary Kessler, who scored 2,200. 15 career points for Wilshire High School from 1952 to 1956. Wilshire no longer an active high school in Van Wert County, but we can't take that away from what Gary Kessler did. Yeah, absolutely. And for all the comedians who are my friends out there, no, I did not guard him and allow him to get all those points. <laughs> a little sure? bit, okay. little bit right. younger than that, but yeah. I know we should have gone right to the source if you were on the court with him. <laughs> Correct. Hey, let's talk about Jay Stockwell, though. I mean, I know it's, it's Smith time period, and congratulations to him. Yeah. But I was talking to a coach the other day who said they don't have this type of success without Jay Stockwell. He has done so much for them. He scores the basketball, he defends, he distributes, and they were just singing his praises of how he important he is to Coach Smith's team over there. Obviously, Trey's having a great year, but let's don't forget the junior point guard, too. Yeah, having a second scorer to go along with Trey goes such a long way, and yep. that's part of the reason why Duffus Jefferson is having such a good year. Yep. Could be a team to watch come tournament time. In the MAC, Mark, Versailles beats Coldwater by nine at the Palace. So last week, I kind of feel like we had some teams at the top of their leagues stumble. Yep. And that happened in the MAC this week with Coldwater losing. It did. And, of course, you know, we were here two weeks ago. I said, you know what? The winner of the Fort Recovery Versailles game will be MAC champion. And Versailles lost, and they got a pretty good shot at being the MAC champion. They yeah. only have two games left to play because, obviously, they're a week ahead of everybody else since their tournament starts before everybody else. Versailles is in a great spot right now. They have to play Minster yet and have to go to Delphi St. John's this weekend. Those are two games that will be struggles for them. The way both teams are playing right now, particularly going at Delphi, will be a struggle as well. But Versailles is in a good spot. Coldwater won on Saturday against Covington. Versailles also won on Saturday against Franklin Monroe. Now the rest of the Max St. Henry's 4-2 in the league. Minster's 4-2 in the league. Fort Recovery's 3-2 in the league. Marion Locals 3-3 three three in the league. So as you said, it's going to be tough for those teams to make it back to the top. It comes down to Coldwater Versailles. Yeah, and I would think if anybody stumbles in there, watch out for St. Henry. They have a lot of league games left. The schedule somewhat favors them in that area, but obviously they'd have to get a loss by Versailles, but I really like how St. Henry's playing right now. All right, good win for Versailles over Coldwater. They mentioned they, they had a couple, couple tough weekends uh, 
two weeks right. ago and then last weekend. So to go on the road there and pick up a big league win, good for them. Now let's go on to the WBL. No yep. changes at the top. 14-3 and three defiance, 6-0 and oh in the league. They took care of Wapakoneta by 12. Bulldogs have now won seven in a row. OG beats Kenton, then loses to Napoleon 67-64. Good game at the Supreme Court between two rivals, two ranked teams on a Saturday. Yeah, it really was. And those are two teams that are highly ranked. Two teams will probably be really some damage in the tournament. Be interested to see, of course, tournament draw coming up this particular Sunday, where those teams fall in their individual brackets. And, but it was a really good matchup the other night. And then a team that you spotlighted last week, and Elida. Yep. They beat Shawnee. That's a good win for the Bulldogs. Really good win for them. I think they're playing well right now. Um, you know, Unruh obviously has scored for them well. Obviously, they stumbled a little bit with Lima Central Catholic on Saturday night. Their two losses out of their last six games have been Lima Central Catholic and Toledo Central Catholic, two quality opponents. I think Elida is playing well right now. You think Defiance runs the table in the league? I think there's a good chance for that. They have St. Mary's, then they go to Van Wert, go to Shawnee. I think they'll be favored in all of those games. They obviously would like to get Singleton back. There's all kinds of rumors about whether he comes back and when and if and so on. But if they get him back, certainly that would be an advantage to them. But they're playing well right now. I think they'll probably run the table. All right, to the Blanchard Valley Conference. Yep. We've got three teams sitting at 7-1 and one in the league. Lipsick, Liberty Benton, and Van Buren. Van Buren beat Hopewell Loudon on Friday. Marcus yep. Brand scored 17 fourth quarter points. How about that? Yeah, how about that? You know, you're struggling, trying to find a way to get a win, and somebody comes up with 17 points in a quarter. You know, how about the experience level there and help carrying his team to win at that particular situation? Great win for Bluffton on Saturday over the Knights, though, right, in a non-conference game? You know, let, let's talk about something we haven't really mentioned all year long. Some of these schools that went deep in the football playoffs, when they get to this point of the year, they're going to get a loss like that will occur. And I, and I think part of it is, you know, you start the first week of, of August and you go through all through football season, play all these big games, you go right into the tournament, then you go right into high school basketball season, and you get late January, you get early February, and all of a sudden your guys are, they're not trying to lose, but it's just one of those nights where everybody's just not in sync and on top of their down, game. That's and, yeah. you know, you're just not mentally in flow. It's not a league game. I don't want to take any away from Bluffton, who played very, very well that evening. But if you look at some of those teams who went deep in the football playoffs, they're getting losses like that at this time of year. Yeah, it's going to happen. It I mean, you know, the basketball season is a grind. We always say that. Yep. The only head-to-head -head between those three teams that are tied, it's Lipsick and Van Buren on February 12th. So we'll wait to talk about that game as it approaches. Uh, Lipsick's 9-1 in their last 10. Their only loss in there was a PCL loss by one to Columbus Grove. Lipsick really playing well right now. In the PCL, speaking of it, Grove, yep. Collida, Miller City, all 4-1, and one, another three-way tie atop that league. You know, they're all going to play each other, too, over the next couple, three weeks. So, and so it's just going to be a toss-up, but they all match up with each other. Look at see who has the home game, who has to go on the road, who can compete in certain situations, remembering that, that Grove is playing, you know, in another conference, and how does that affect them as well, playing on Friday night, coming back on Saturday. A lot of things going on in the PCL, but it looks like you're going to have a, maybe a two-way tie for the championship. Yeah, looking like a share in that mm -hmm. league. We will see Grove and Pandora Gilboa and you, on Tuesday night on a rebroadcast game that you can see Wednesday. We'll get to our rebroadcast schedule momentarily. NWCC, no changes. Perry continues to roll. We don't even have to yeah. break anything down here. We know that Perry's likely the league champ. League champion, and they're on a roll. Good chance they can run the table. They've got a couple of challenges left in their last five, but the way the Commodores are playing, they may well go into the tournament on a 13-game win streak. Big game in the Shelby County League this yep. week. Number Absolutely. four, Jackson Center against number 11, Rushi. This is going to help decide the league. We've been looking at this league for a while, yep. saying they keep, you know, they play each other twice. They're going to play each other later. This is the game. Jackson Center has one loss. Uh, Rushi has two. Anna stumbled last week to Fort Recovery or Fort Laramie. Excuse me. Nice win for Fort Laramie. They've kind of stumbled, so they're now have three losses in conference play. But Jackson Center and Rushi going to match up this weekend. Um, the game is at Rushi. And I, we've been continually surprised, I guess, by them all year long. Maybe by now we shouldn't be anymore. They graduated all those seniors from a year ago in their state tournament run, but Rushi has really played well this year. And it's one of those two teams wins that conference every year for the last five years anyway. So let's, let's see who, how it goes this year. Should be a good game. It's one of our rebroadcast games. We've got a bunch of yep. great games again coming your we way do. this weekend. So let's show you what you can watch when and where. Starts Wednesday, 6 p.m. with Pandora Gilboa and Columbus Grove Boys in the Putnam County League. Wednesday at 7.30, live basketball for you. Wilmington versus the Ohio Northern University men. And at halftime of that, catch a signing day special, of course. Tomorrow is signing day. A bunch of local athletes signing their letters of intent to play college athletics. And we'll bring you many of them, and you'll hear from many of them on that halftime special. You can also check that out online at WOSN.TV. Friday at 10.30, Crestview and Spencerville. That's where you'll be, Mark. Yep. Looking forward to that one. Friday at 10.44 on WTLW after the sports report, number one versus number one, LCC and Lincoln View. Saturday, busy day again, 7 p.m., number two, Lima Senior against Finley, and then that 
Good one in the Shelby County League. Jackson Center versus Rushi immediately following at 8.30. Saturday, 10.30 p.m. on WTLW after the sports report. Wayne Trace and Crestview. Two more for you Sunday. One basketball game and then a little wrestling. 7 p.m. Marion Wilkel and Spencerville boys. And then at 8.30, Annie Lynch will be on the call for the Western Buckeye League Wrestling Championships. Excited to bring you that as well. Well, thank you so much, Mark. We got through a lot again, as we usually do. And we'll be back here next week to break down this week's games.